3,000 pills over two years with six months of daily injections. I mean, just hell. Okay, and it, it worked, and it only worked three quarters of the time if you took all your meds. I've always wanted to see that happen in front of me. So I'm a uh, medical epidemiologist. I'm an internal medicine doctor by training. When I was a medical student, I actually went to, uh, to go to India. I was in the pediatrics ward. And then every day this kid would be brought in and he would have like a towel over his head. We called that the towel sign I, at, at the time. You kind of had to hold something because you knew as soon as they took the towel off, there would be this giant swollen head on this little tiny baby. And that was actually tuberculous meningitis. And, uh, and it happened every day, multiple times, day after day. And that was when I realized that, oh my gosh, like people are actually genuinely suffering from this disease that was non-existent in my training, tuberculosis. And then to learn that it was eminently treatable, it was sort of like, this is just wrong. And I actually pivoted my career to focus on, on public health, specifically to well, stop brown people from dying of TB. Part of the reason why TB has been such a uh, persistent problem has been we've been trying to get rid of it with really bad tools. We've had to rely on a 100-year-old diagnostic test, but it's not very good. Now there is actually a genuine pipeline. There are um, several new diagnostics, uh, much lower cost than today's tests, that would provide the result on the spot to someone wherever they are, even at the lowest point of care. There's treatment that's going to move from six months of you know, a, a large handful of pills to hopefully two months. There are at least seven drugs in the pipeline in advanced clinical trials, which can be combined into new potent combinations, and that's fantastic. Some of the vaccine candidates in the pipeline, there are some early signals of possible partial efficacy, which hasn't happened yet till date with TB vaccines, can actually you know, be deployed in adults and even adults and adolescents so that we can prevent TB from ever happening by boosting people's immunity. That would be awesome. And, and again, like the world had always said that, you know, even if you had a vaccine, it wouldn't matter because you wouldn't, couldn't vaccinate the world's population for an infectious disease, right? Again, disproven COVID. So now we know that if we can come up with a vaccine, there's a mechanism that can actually bring it to people who need it fast. So that just kind of redoubles the, the, the reasons to find one. So I, I think that interim, that's the uh, medium term vision in the next sort of three to five years that is genuinely achievable for earlier detection in clinic and even community-based detection linked to a much simpler treatment. You know, the, the most exciting thing uh, uh, is probably point of care molecular testing. Like that's really, uh, that's, that's huge, right? That's that first step to be able to have it available, you know, instead of being at the 15 to 30% place, uh, of places who, where you might visit that have diagnostic uh, access to TB services. Can it get to the point where it's as simple as a pregnancy test, you know, where, you, where it might be uh, available in the majority of clinical settings. So I think that's probably the thing that's that's first through coming to come first through the pipeline. And that uh, we expect to see submissions to WHO for approvals, uh, validation of uh, validation data and approvals uh, next year. The other thing that's that's super important right now is is the BPAL regimen, so called for MDR TB treatment. So MDR TB TB treatment for those who have rifampicin resistant TB, regular treatment won't work. And you need more drugs, previously injections, super costly 3,000 pills over two years with six months of daily injections. I mean, just hell. Okay, and it, it worked, and it only worked three quarters of the time if you took all your meds. Now you've got a handful of pills a day for six months. Equivalent, a little harder, but equivalent to standard treatment that could be even decentralized out to regular clinics. It's like, oh, you got TB. Is it this this treat the treatment A, the A box or the B box for your treatment? Well, if it's if it's if, and if it's MDR, now you get the B box. So the, that's now being rolled out globally with incredible you know, enthusiasm and demand. Where this is sort of the intermediate uh, early dividend of all that drug development research. Is a much cheaper, easier MDR treatment regimen. And that's going to really transform the lives of those hundreds of thousands of people who have drug-resistant TB today. So that's happening now with enormous scale up globally. And that's a direct outcome of, of the research and development investment towards that uh, simple, shorter, safer regimen. What keeps me going ultimately is seeing those systems change. Seeing how, you know, a country moves from neglecting a disease to 
tackling it head on and making it a priority. You know, seeing how much fewer children, for example, are actually getting things like TB meningitis. Communities of TB survivors are mobilizing like council other communities of TB survivors and actually taking on the responsibility for seeing that they sustain their treatment. Those are the things that uh, uh, really keep you going.